Welcome to part two. Uh, part three, I'm gonna perform the actual oral that I've been working on. Uh, right now, it's been a bit of a mess, um, which is okay. I got a, a poem by Vizlava Zimborska. It looks kind of like this at this point. Um, and uh, here's the book. Such a great book, Vizlava Zimborska. Here's the other book, Lincoln and the Bardo. Just fantastic pieces of literature. I did a practice um, oral where I worked off of this. And uh, it was okay, but it didn't go as well. I had a lot of ums. Um, and so my next video is gonna capture my polished performance. I've, trans I've transformed this into this. And so um, I'll be practicing this. this is a, it's a performance. It's a, it's, a, it's a verbal performance. So um, that's what I'll be doing in the next video. In this video, I just had another insight as I'm helping my students prepare for their orals, um, and I think that it's significant. Um, and I, what I was trying to do is I try to think about everything from everybody's perspective, you know, from my perspective, student perspective. Now I'm thinking about the examiner's perspective, someone whose job it is to assess a ton of these, and what are they gonna get? They're gonna get something that looks like this, that has your outline, um, but what they're gonna spend more time on probably right before they listen to you speak is something that looks like this, maybe, if you're doing Persepolis. This is an extract from Persepolis. Or something that looks like this. This happens to be from a wonderful book called The Overstory. And, um, you know, this is less than 40 lines. They're gonna read this before they listen to you speak. And they're gonna read this like a very, very good English teacher does. And they're gonna be looking for those significant choices, techniques, and devices. And they're gonna, Probably before you even start speaking, they're going to have an expectation that if they're, if they're clear, they're going to look for you as you're examining your global issue. You could have chosen any part of any work. They're going to expect that, that you have chosen a page where the most significant authorial choices relate directly to your global issue. So here's my new post-it for this video. If there are devices, techniques that are easy to identify, the kinds of things that, that these uh, examiners are going to see on their first reading. So I just wanted to give you an example of that. Like if I was, a, if I was an assessor and, and, uh, and what you had, the extract, let's say, it doesn't, it, for this purpose it doesn't really matter what the global issue is, um, but let's just say that, uh, that this is the extract from the overstory. She wasn't wrong to reprimand him, and yet... She stole his property. The whole disaster from up in this crow's nest has what Ms. Gilpin might call moral ambiguity. He makes room on the oak's sinuous branch for the two boys from a separate piece. He watches them play their white guy prep school games of love and war in their tree above the river. So if I was presented, if I was an examiner, and before I've even listened to your speak, I'm gonna kind of expect, and it's not like you know it would be a complete fail if you didn't, but I'm gonna have an expectation that you're gonna use the word allusion. And that this might be one of the choices that you're examining, especially if it was something like um, racial discrimination, prejudice, bicultural identity, um, or something that involves this because uh, Nile, of course, is a character who um, is uh, from India, or his family is from India. Um, he's a first-generation uh, citizen of the United States. And um, it's not an accident that the, that, that, that the author mentioned this. And so I would kind of have an expectation that, you're, that, that you would use that specific word, allusion, and that this might be one of the things that you um, discuss. Way below the brown-green California ground bounces each time. Now, he's about to fall out of a tree, and so a bonus point would be if you recognize this bounces, the ground bounces. Later in the extract, he's going to fall out of the tree, bounce on his coccyx, <laughs> which is his uh, bottom, but he cracks the base of his spine, becomes paralyzed. This is a really important moment in this novel. So you might say that foreshadowing, but that would be like a, that'd be a bonus. That'd be like, because uh, that one's not as obvious. It's obvious if there's an italicized name of another work in a work that what is happening is an illusion, allusion. 
Uh, Ms. Gilpin already has some columns of crime. You let that rat-haired woman. So this is, the other one that I wanted to mention was I guess I'll have to read it. And his poor father, who has made himself invisible for years just for the right to live and work in the Golden State, he stares at Nile in horror, wondering how a child might be so arrogant as to think he could talk back to an American authority and live. Nile peers down from his hoke airy into the path below, his mind a mass of tangled code. There is a clear metaphor and that has to do with his character because he will go on to become um, a computer programmer that changes the world. But I'm, I'm going to close this out. This one's not going to be super long, but I did, I did just want to maybe if as you're working on your extracts, it's very good to work from, you know, something that looks like this. Put yourself in an examiner's position and say, what are the choices worth examining. What are the ones that you can see? Because your examiner might not be that much of an expert on your work overall. It's possible that your examiner has not read the work overall, but the examiner is going to have right in front of them the extract. So if there are devices, techniques that are easy to identify in your extract, name them. The very next video in this series will feature me performing to the best of my abilities for 10 minutes. I won't ask myself questions after 10 minutes, but I will try to do what I feel would be a strong oral with the global issue depictions of suffering in literature. Thanks for watching.